welcome to my mompreneur studio. I'm Anissa Crespo, and on today's episode of She Swaps, I am interviewing Benedicta, and she comes to us all the way from beautiful London. Benedicta, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. How about you? I am wonderful. Thank you for asking. So um, tell everyone a little bit about who you are, what you do, and the book that you recently launched. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm from London, originally from Nigeria, and um, I've lived here for a few years. And well, the thing that birthed the, the book was um, my son. So having a baby over lockdown and all of that, um, I went through a lot. <laughs> I went through different things and um, it was so different, the culture shock and all of that. Um, and so I felt like I needed to say and um, talk about it, but not just um, it's not just limited to that. It's it's about so many different things, different um, facets of motherhood. Um, I've always been, well, not always been a career coach, but I've been a career coach for a few years now. And um, while writing the book, it was like a no brainer. Combine these things together, these things that you love and serve moms and so I focused on um, working with moms and helping moms on a career break return to work. So yeah, that's what I do. That's it about my book as well. That's awesome. So um, as far as your coaching goes, who who are your clients? Who do you help and how do you help them? Um, as I mentioned, um, I work with moms now. Uh, moms that typically on a career break. So it could be maternity leave. It could be um, maybe you took a whole year or two years or three years even um, to care for your children, but now you're ready to jump back into work. Well, especially with the economic climate. Um, so I help them find a highly profitable um, job or, or high income job, as we all call it, um, and something that fits with their lifestyle and their evolved interests, because we know um, a lot of us, um, a lot of our interests change after having kids. So yeah, that is so thing. true. And uh, I mean, first of all, that's amazing. I love what you do. Um, a woman after my own heart. I am on a mission to help 1000 moms by the year 2030. So, um, you know, love that you're helping moms. We we need all the support we can get. Right. Because we have to be the strong ones. We have to be the backbone for our families. And um, a lot of people don't recognize that, you know, there's like this stigma about women where, you know, the man is the strong one, but as moms, we carry a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> and especially, you know, it, nowadays, like we have to have our careers as well. So, I mean, not to say that we have to, but a lot of us choose to, and, um, you know, so balancing everything, balancing work and life and, you know, making sure that our children's needs are, are met and, you know, it can be overwhelming and a lot. And um, even getting back into um, the workforce for some people, it's challenging. I, I have a client of my own right now who recently went through a divorce and um, I'm helping her, you know, with her resume and her LinkedIn profile and just jumping back into the workforce because it's different. And, you know, things change so drastically uh very quickly actually um you know if you're out of something for even five years i mean it's a different world and especially now after you know the the transformations that we've all went through personally and professionally through covid i mean our entire world changed so you know transitioning back into that after becoming a mother and going through some life changes it's it's difficult and um what are some of the challenges you face, um, you know, in your coaching and your career? Um, so a lot of mums don't think it is possible to get a job that um, will fit into their like lifestyle. Um, a lot of, well, some others are not, are not problem aware in that way. Um, I'd say that, yeah, that's most of what I've had to deal with. They know they want it, but they don't do anything about it. And so there's like this um, crazy statistic in the UK about 80% of women not returning to work after having children. Yes. Wow, that is a drastic number. That is a large percentage, 80%. Yeah, they want to, but they don't. Wow, that's incredible. So I think that's so important to talk about 
um, the way we need to normalize a work-life balance. So I am an advocate for normalizing um, having your career and having your family, because for a lot of us, we need to be fulfilled and fill our cups with both. Um, you know, it's not just our family, but, you know, we have important work that we need to do in the world as well. And um, not only that, but we need to make money <laughs> so um, so that we can feed our kids, right? So, um, yeah, I think we totally need to normalize that. I think a lot of employers, especially with like the, the influx of working from home and remote work, wow. are starting to recognize that there can be a work-life balance. And, you know, we can somehow normalize this so that um, women are able to, you know, give birth, take their maternity, and uh, which in my opinion is not long enough, uh, the maternity leave. I don't know what it is in it, London. It's, but it's, it, yeah, it's much better here. Like, yeah, in, yeah. The, in the United States, it's six weeks. Like, um, you know, when you go to get a puppy, uh, a puppy can't even be away from its mother after six <laughs> weeks. So <laughs> it's interesting. But um how long is it over there? Um, here it's um typically like you can take as much as um thirty nine weeks or a year, um legally, but okay. you get full pay. So for some jobs, you get full pay, um up till six weeks, and after six weeks, you get maternity pay, which is a lot uh, smaller. Um, it's not it, yeah, it doesn't do a lot, but a lot of companies are now extending it to like full pay to like four months at least the fifth or sixth month mark. So it makes it much easier for mothers to be able to stay at home and care for their babies. That's amazing. I hope whoever makes the regulations over here in the States is hearing this because we need that. I mean, six weeks after having newborns, I have twins and my twins were born um, right at the onset of COVID. And uh, it just so happened that I was able to extend my leave just because we were working remotely and, you know, COVID had us uh, very slow at the time. And, you know, it's just just happened to work out for me where I was able to extend my maternity leave. But had it not been that way, like had we not had a global pandemic, like six weeks, which is just over a month, and I would have been shuffled off back to work um, and my my children shuffled off to daycare. Care. So, um, yeah, that's incredible. We need to be able to somehow extend that. And we only get like something if I'm if I'm not correct on this, because I'm trying to remember, I think it was like something like 60 percent of your salary. So it's not even like, you know, um, livable. Wow. Let's just call it that. Um, so there are employers who, you know, are willing to work with women and, and new mothers, which is fantastic. And even new fathers. Um but yeah, we need to change some of that over here. So hopefully somebody's listening who makes the rules. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. And then once we do get back into work, we're nursing and we're, um, you know, we're, we're needing to go to doctor's appointments um, sometimes once a week or, you know, and that's for a healthy baby. So, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to kind of balance all that. So um, I'm actually looking forward to uh, taking a look at your book. So tell us how we can find it. And what's the name of it? It's How Dare You. I love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was going for. Um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> you can find it on Amazon um, worldwide. So anywhere there's Amazon, you'll find it there. Um, yeah. Yeah. You should get, well, you should get it. People listening should get it. Um, it's actually quite resourceful. I mean, it's not just for people here. It's people, um, it's for women all over. And I've also recently found out that single people or um, women without children can also read um, and they'll find something, something in there for them. I mean, if they change the context and don't think about it from like a motherhood um, perspective, they would find something in there for them as well. Yeah, I love that. I am going to click off and go on Amazon right now. So Benedicta <laughs> Johnson and how dare you make sure you go to Amazon and get that book. Like she said, you don't have to be a mother. There are tidbits in there for you. So make sure you check out her book. And um, that is so exciting. Do you want to share anything else before we sign off here? Um, 
Well, for mums, um, if you're a mum listening, I just want to say um, you can aspire for more. You can um, just believe in yourself, believe in your capabilities. You are so much more than you think you are. Um, we tend to downplay um, our abilities or what we're able to do because, I don't know, for some reason, motherhood tends to hit um, our self-esteem. And so I need you to get out of that place, pick yourself up and do what you need to do. If you want to start a business, start a business. If you want to get a new job, it is possible to find a job that you can fit around your um, lifestyle as a mum. So yeah, I think that's all I have to say. That's enough. That's enough to say because what you just said is so powerful and important and women need to hear it. It's something I advocate for every day. The sky is not the limit. You are the limit. You can do whatever it is you aspire to do, whether you're a mother or not. And um, being a mother just gives you that much more uh, fire under you to to go and do it because you're you're leaving a legacy for your children. So yeah. I love that, Benedict. I really enjoyed talking to you today. I'm sure our listeners will agree. And I can't wait to read How Dare You. So thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. It was great being here.